Hey, thank you for following the First Middle Church of Christ. We're really glad to have you following us and hope our videos are be a big encouragement to you. Hey, uh, if you're out there traveling this holiday season, we just pray that God will watch over you, protect you, and keep you safe. If you're on the social media platforms, be sure to look us up, follow us, and like us, and let your friends know about us too. And hey, also, if you're on the YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and pass that along to your family and friends. You know, we have a lot of great topics and material of great discussion that can help you and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. But why is pornography so addictive? You see, the, the addictive nature of pornography is a complex and controversial topic. And it's important to note that not everyone agrees on the extent to which pornography can be considered addictive. But however, some experts believe that several factors may contribute to the potential of pornography to be a habit forming for some individuals. You see, when we look at the brain chemistry, watching pornography can lead to the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward. But see, this dopamine release can create a sense of satisfaction and reinforcement, leading some individuals to seek out more pornography to replicate the pleasurable experience. So you start out with soft porn, you go to medium porn, you go to hard porn, and then you go to hardcore porn. So it continues to get deeper and deeper into pornography because you need that satisfaction and reinforcement. So it doesn't just stop at just soft porn. See, but also too, there's accessibility here. You know, with the widespread availability of pornography on the internet, especially, I mean, the internet is wide open now. You have access to it everywhere on your cell phone. You got a laptop, you got a computer. I mean, there's always some way to access it. And it's easier than ever for individuals to access a virtually endless supply of explicit content. And this accountability can make it even more challenging for some people to moderate their consumption. You know, then also there's escapism and coping. For some individuals, pornography may serve as a means of escaping from stress, anxiety, and other negative emotions. As a result, they may turn to pornography as a way to cope with difficult feelings, which can contribute to a pattern of excessive use. In our behavior conditioning, over time, repeated exposure of pornography can lead to a process of behavioral conditioning where individuals develop a habitual pattern of seeking out and consuming explicit material. So it becomes a habitual habit. 21 days to develop a habit takes 21 days to break a habit. Remember that. It's important to note that not everyone who views pornography will develop a problematic behavior or experience addiction-like symptoms. So not everybody will be like that, but there are a percentage of people who will be. So additionally, it is crucial to approach discussions about pornography and addiction with sensitivity and an understanding of individual experiences. So if you or someone that you know is struggling with concerns related to pornography use, seeking support from a mental health professional or counselor can be beneficial as well. But the question of whether pornography can be considered addictive is a subject of ongoing debate in the fields of psychology, neuroscience, and sociology. While the concept of porn addiction is not recognized as a diagnosable disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, the DSM-5, some individuals report struggling to control their consumption of pornography. Here is an in-depth analysis of some of the factors that may contribute to the potentially addictive nature of pornography of certain individuals. Neurobiological factors, the dopamine release, Research suggests that viewing pornography can lead to the release of dopamine in the brain's reward system. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure, motivation, and reward. Where individuals encounter stimulating or rewarding experiences, such as consuming pornography, dopamine is released, reinforcing the behavior of potential leading to desires for more of the same experience. Neuroplasticity, the brain's capacity to adopt and rewire itself in response to experiences, knowing has neuroplasticity may play a role in the potential addictive nature of pornography. Repeated exposure to pornography can lead to changes in neural pathways and the reinforcement of specific behaviors, potentially contributing to a pattern of habitual use. Are psychological and beneficial factors? Escapism and coping? Some individuals may turn to pornography as a way to escape that stress, 
their negative emotions or maybe even life's challenges that's thrown at them. So they find that way to get away from it and release their self and relax. The temporary release of distraction offered by pornography, it also can create a habit of seeking out explicit material as a coping mechanism. You see, when we start conditioning and uh, conditioning and habit formation, see, over time, individuals may develop a conditioned response to seek out and consume pornography as a habitual behavior. Now, this habitual pattern can become enriched, leading to difficulties in uh, moderating and stopping consumption. We become so consumed with it and we become so addictive to it that, you know, it's hard for us to let it go. We can try, but it seems like we're drawn right back to it. So we need need to uh, watch out for our um, habitual consumption of it because it become habit forming. Um, social culture and environmental factors. You see accessibility and affordability. The widespread availability of pornography material on the Internet makes it even more easy to access it and often free of charge. See, this high level of accessibility can contribute to increased consumptions and potential habit formation. See, society attributes towards sex and sexuality, as well as cultural norms around pornography consumption. It can influence on individuals' relationships with explicit material. So for some individuals, the acceptance of normalization of pornography may impact their consumption patterns. They may want their partners to act out some of the scenes or scenarios that they have encountered through watching pornography. And they think that this is how they should be and how they should act. Pre-existing vulnerabilities, individuals that are addicted, have addictive behaviors, may be influenced by a range of factors, including genetic predispositions, early life experiences, mental health conditions, and even personal vulnerabilities. Co-occurring issues like individuals struggling with depression, anxiety, trauma, or even relationship difficulties may be susceptible to developing problematic patterns of pornography consumption as a way of coping with their challenges. But it's important to recognize that not everyone who consumes pornography will experience addictive behaviors. Okay? So loneliness and rejection can indeed influence an individual's relationship with pornography potentially contributing to patterns of excessive consumption. <clears throat> with our coping mechanisms, loneliness and rejection can trigger negative emotions as a sense of social isolation. And in response, individuals may seek out coping mechanisms to alleviate their distress. For some, pornography can serve as a readily accessible and immediate source of release, providing a temporary escape from feeling of loneliness and rejection. Our emotional regulation you see, individuals experience loneliness and rejection that may turn to pornography as a means of regulating their own emotions. Pornography consumption can offer a source of pleasure and comfort, providing a distraction from negative feelings as a way to seek validation or intimacy, all bad into a stimulated or fantasy context. You see, when we're seeking connection and intimacy, loneliness and rejection can heighten a person's desire for connection and intimacy. In the absence of fulfilling real life relationships, some individuals may turn to pornography as a substitute for emotional and sexual intimacy, seeking a sense of connection and validation through the consumption of explicit material. Our self-esteem and self-worth, loneliness and rejection can impact an individual's self-esteem and self-worth. When feeling unworthy or unlovable, some individuals may turn to pornography as a means of seeking validation or affirmation all bad into the superficial and temporary form. See, it's important to note that the relationship between loneliness, rejection, and pornography consumption is complex and multifaceted. Not everyone who experiences loneliness or rejection will develop problematic patterns of pornography use. And individual responses to these experiences can also vary. Additionally, the potential impact of loneliness and rejection on pornography consumption can be influenced by a range of other factors, including cultural attitudes, personal values, mental health, and coping strategies. For individuals who find that loneliness and rejection are contributing to difficulty in managing their own consumption of pornography, seeking support from mental health professionals, counselors, or support groups that can be beneficial to you, addressing underlying emotional and relational needs, developing healthier coping strategies, and cultivating 
Fulfilling social connections are important aspects of addressing this potential impact of loneliness and rejection of patterns of pornography consumption.